Uh, so hi, one of the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... Hi, I'm Addie from Hallocene. All right, so there's some questions to say about their new EP, Maleficent. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Oh my gosh, it's been so amazing. Um, it's been the best response to any original album so far. And uh, we're just so excited that everybody likes it so much. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. E- EP rocks. I've been seeing it a lot on socials. A lot of promotion. Hey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're a little heavy handed with that. We uh, just like to annoy the shit out of people with our faces. That, that's the best way to do <laughs> it in this it. day and age, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the EP title or cover art? Yeah. So Maleficent, uh, the song, is uh, a song that I personally wrote about my finding my self-confidence. Um, I think it kind of came out from people judging me and misinterpreting maybe what I want to be as a person, um, the way that I dress, uh, my sexuality, being a woman, whatever it might be. A lot of these things can be seen as sinful, can be seen as wrong, um, whatever it might be. And uh, I just eventually decided to embrace that and say, okay, if being me makes me evil, then I'm an evil bitch. And uh that makes me maleficent. And so I just kind of owned it. Um, and so that's kind of what the album is, is it's, it approaches all of these kind of darker elements, whether it's mental health, whether it's sex, um, and just kind of approaches those, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I am on to it right now. Um, <laughs> and it's about kind of just like finding yourself and uh, all those, all those dark places and learning about them. All right. That makes, makes sense. sense. Um, So can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album? So we decided, I, let me just preface this really quick. So we were on tour and we went up north near the Canadian wildfires. Mm -hmm. And so it has completely wrecked everything in here. So I have nothing left. (laughs) So, um, So the writing process for the album, we decided to kind of do it backwards. We really love our fans and we want to let them guide us in what they like. So we decided to um, just to kind of democratize that and whatever they, we would put out a song and if they liked it heavier, we were like, okay, we're going to go heavier on the next one. So we really just kind of let them lead and kind of guide us on what they wanted from us. And we released single, single, single music video with every single one. And then at the end, put it together as a collection of songs that we felt like fit together really well. So we did it kind of backwards, but it kind of gives more of an opportunity for each song to shine rather than releasing an album. And then people miss like 75% of it and they only listen to the two singles. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you guys prioritize what your listeners prefer versus what you guys prefer. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we we love all kinds of music. And that mm-hmm. was kind of the basis of our band is we didn't really care what we sounded like. Oh. Um, and so we let, we let the fans guide us. We, we kind of went through a pop phase. We kind of had a pop punk phase. And now we're in this metalcore phase and we're just loving it. So. All right. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, so what song off this album took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? Okay, which song took the longest to write? Probably Repent. Um, so, and that's probably my favorite too, honestly. Um, so Repent is a song that I wrote for my mom. Uh, she experienced a lot of abuse growing up, uh, both sexual and physical, um, and nobody believed her. Uh, she tried to speak up about it and no one acknowledged that it actually happened. Um, obviously we believe her and we want to, I wanted to put that story out there. I wanted to give her a song that she could scream in the middle of the night when she was wanting to let that negativity out. And I wanted it to be right. So it took a lot of revisions to like, make sure that I was handling that topic very carefully. And I wasn't, you know, hurting anybody in the process. Um, but it's really cool because every time we, that we play that song live, the crowd just screams it at the top of their lungs. And it's kind of like everybody collectively saying like, we believe you, we, mm-hmm. you know, acknowledge you. And it's just so magical. It's awesome. That's fucking amazing. That That's such like yeah. a, a huge kind of thing to take on, but it's awesome that you're using your platform to kind of, you know, uplift your mother's story. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, so I want you to tell us your favorite lyric off this album and what it means to you. Ooh, okay. 
I think my favorite lyric is the uh, last line of Maleficent. Um, it's so bow down to queen of sin. I've always been Maleficent. So it's kind of like at the beginning of the song, it's kind of me coming to terms with my my confidence and kind of trying to understand it. And by the end of it, it's just, I'm just full blown. Like, this is who I am. I'm proud. Here I am. Bow down. This is me. You know, it's just, it's just a great celebration and I love it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, so would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this record? Um, I, I think it's, I mean, it's been over a year that we've made this album. So it's definitely been over a lot of different hills and valleys. This one versus the last one, the last one we uh, did mostly during the pandemic. Um, so this one, it was a lot more, I don't know, like we got to play them live as they came out and experience what that felt like live and mm -hmm. kind of adapt as we went along as like, okay, what is this going to sound like live? How can we actually play this with our crowd? You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And mm -hmm. like writing to kind of appease the fans, does that ever um, like put you guys in a box or like make the writing process difficult because you're like, we have to do this and like, you just can't quite get there. Is, is that ever an issue? No. I think if anything, it's just more of a fun challenge. I mean, I've been writing since I was 11. So it's kind of just like I've written every kind of song there is. Um, I used to actually do that for a living. I wrote songs for people on Fiverr. So I, I used to write pop songs. I wrote hip hop songs. I wrote all kinds of stuff. And it's all fun to me. Um, I will say that I actually come from a metal background. My dad was a metal guitarist. My mom always had metal playing. Um, so it kind of is funny that like, once we let our fans start deciding what we sounded like, because we thought we should be pop, we thought we should be, you know, more like radio friendly, because my voice is very high, naturally, and I don't like scream or anything like that. Um, so we kind of just went with that direction. But uh, it's funny that once we actually let the fans tell us what we, they thought we should do, we kind of ended up where I wanted to be anyway, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So they, they pushed us to do things that we were kind of uncomfortable with. Um, <clears throat> I love Brad's screaming voice, but like he was always kind of afraid of it. He was like, he felt like he didn't have the confidence to do it, but they pushed him. They said, no, you sound amazing. You need to do this more. And I'm just so glad that they did that because now, I mean, he's amazing. It's so, it's so cool to hear. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Huh. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should I do it in the car with friends, in the dark with headphones on, is workout album, party album? What do you personally recommend? Oh, wow. I don't know. I think the beauty of our fans is that for kind of everybody, there's not one type that shows up. You might think that everybody that shows up looks like me is like wearing dark makeup and stuff, but it's like, it's kids, it's adults, it's old people, it's people from all walks of life. And so I think just listening to it wherever you are, um, I think it can fit basically anything that you're doing. It can, some, for some people, it's going to be more of like a Zen thing. Some people say that it is like some relaxing for them. Some people want to fucking party to it. Um, so I think that that's kind of the beauty of it. It really kind of resonates differently for everybody. So whatever they feel like they want to listen to it on that's that's what i recommend <laughs> all right fair enough hell yeah so, <laughs> this one should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words no more no less sexy deep and dark yeah sounds good hell yeah. all right um so in that same train of thought is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album um, yeah, I, I think, uh, honestly, a little bit of uncomfortability. I want, I want them to kind of question themselves a little bit. Um, we definitely cover some topics, like I said, that are a little bit outside of the norm, whether it is, you know, mental health or sex or, um, just darkness in general, it can make people feel uncomfortable. Um, but I think that living in that uncomfortability is, is good for us to kind of explore that a little bit and make sure that we're okay with ourselves um so yeah okay oh, yeah. Um, uh, the the covers that were included on the album they they fit in so well like with what you guys are talking on about in the songs that you you wrote so w was that intentional 
Yeah, definitely. The cover, we don't usually include covers on our original albums, but we felt like these covers, they became, I don't want to say they became our songs because obviously we didn't write them, Mm -hmm. but we put so much of our own personal brand onto them that they really felt like us Mm -hmm. and they felt like a cohesive storyline to what we were trying to accomplish with the album so we just had to put them on there like i just i we couldn't resist (laughs) fair enough absolutely makes sense Uh, so are you able to talk about any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of this album positive or negative so actually what i will say when we we actually just moved cross country from phoenix arizona to nashville tennessee um we did that in march and we decided like a week after moving that we were going to release this album in six weeks. Um, I don't know why we thought that was a great idea. We were going to, we booked a tour and we were like, we're going to book a tour in eight weeks and release this in six weeks. Let's just try and go for it. That was a really difficult deadline while unpacking my entire house. I still have boxes, um, that I have not completely taken care of. So, um, we kind of have a bad habit of not knowing when to quit and um take a break but i think after this tour clearly i need a break so that's what we're going to be doing when we get back home <laughs> that's Damn. why <laughs> that, that, that's, that's <laughs> all i have to that's my follow-up question is like why why why, why was that the know, decision I ask myself that every day <laughs> so yeah someone came to us with the idea that um you know we could do this tour and we wanted to take it we wanted to jump on it and we had this collection of songs that was almost ready so we just wanted to add a couple more on there and we were like fuck it we can do it so we tried it was it was it was so stressful. There were a lot of sleepless nights, but uh, we did eventually make it happen. <laughs> okay, Damn. makes sense. Um, That's crazy. And then I know we, I had mentioned at the beginning of the interview, seeing you guys a lot on social media, you know, it, it's that day, it's that age, you got to do it. Um, how do you guys kind of balance the, the, the making the music and also having to be online? Do you have a balance? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, we really don't. Um, I actually just hired a social media company to help me out. And I thought that would like take some of the burden off me to like, kind of help me like post when I am not feeling like it. But all it did was motivate me to want to make more. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of like, we're trying to work through that right now. It's really something that we we overexert ourselves way too much. Um, But we love it. It's that's what's hard is when you love your job, you just wanted to do it. And I don't it doesn't feel like work until you lose your voice. And you're like, Oh, I overexerted myself. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There's no balance yet. We're looking for it. <laughs> Working on it. All good. Um, so for this question, since you're on tour, we have to ask, uh, what's been your go-to snack when you're at a gas station for a rest stop? Oh, let me think. We've been stopping at a lot of Dunkin' Donuts for some reason. I don't know why. Donuts have been like this reoccurring thing, which is not a good tour food. Do not recommend. No. I, can't, I don't know what's happening. I just want the sugar, man dude enjoy the sugar <laughs> fuck yeah what's your what's your like go-to donut are you like a uh, glazed donut so i like the ones with the um not the boston cream but mm-hmm. the cream filled with like the icing on the inside mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah it's so the, good. i thought i had a cookie dough one. Oh shit did it have like cookie dough in it, it was... yes it was so good what the fuck are they doing over there because that was not there last time <laughs> with all that <laughs> That just sounds scrumptious. All right, I'm gonna have to try that. I'm gonna have to try that. <laughs> it was thick. But, I mean, I can imagine it's fucking cookie dough, right? Shit. Yeah, and I felt terrible afterwards, but it's fine. It was delicious <laughs> while I was eating it. I was gonna say exactly, but while you're eating it, amazing. Afterwards, instant regret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely. Yep. Uh, so, on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be, and why? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Thank you. Ooh. Okay, I already got it. Lasagna, because we got lots of layers, lots of different layers, and um, made up with all kinds of different things. Can change it up on the fly. All kinds of different tastes. Um, we adapt to whatever you want us to be. <laughs> there you go. There Love you it. go. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the last couple questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? 
Oh, a bean and cheese burrito. I'm from Arizona, so Mexican food is my heritage. <laughs> and um, a bean and cheese burrito with drink. Can I say a milkshake? Yeah. Sure. Will milkshake. it go together? No, no, but you could have it. You have it. it yeah. I that's that counts two meals for me. I get the milkshake <laughs> and the burrito. It works. Fuck yeah. What a, what flavor milkshake? <laughs> You, you vanilla that's okay. you don't want to do chocolate that'd be weird <laughs> i mean it's already teetering on the line <laughs> it's already pretty weird that's yeah, fine but i fuck with it that's cool that's cool <laughs> uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week where would you live fictional world mm -hmm. Ooh. you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead i have a four-year-old son he's obsessed with mario i'm gonna go with mario world that would be sick Seems pretty cool. You get extra lives, so whatever. If you die, fuck it. Um, yeah, that's my pick. Nice. Hell yeah. All right. Um, so I've done of asking the last question. Every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Red. Fuck yeah. Nice. Specific <laughs> shade of red? My hair. So it used to be red. Um, I have kind of, you know, gone away from that for now, but I'm sure we're going to make our way back there again, which is vibrant fire truck red. That's my favorite. Nice. Hell all right. yeah. Um, yeah. So as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Um, No, just I hope you guys like Maleficent. It's We worked really hard on it, and we're really proud of it. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it, and I'm sorry my voice is so fucked. All good. <laughs> all good. Uh, well, thank you for now. It's been Addie from Hallocene, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.